皆様大変お待たせいたしましたそれではただいまよりソサイティ 5.0 を実現するインテリジェントエッジインテリジェントクラウドと題しましてセッションを始めさせていただきます。The next phase of the intelligent edge is upon us. It's no longer a question of what if. The tools to reshape our world are here. An intelligent infrastructure for change, built by our partners and embraced by our customers. A platform to reimagine the fundamentals of our cities, establishing new ways to plan and operate. A comprehensive approach to how we embed computing. Redefining every aspect of processes end to end. Making digital transformation possible for every person. We're accelerating time to market with zero touch plug and play solutions. Digital twins of crops that bridge the physical and digital worlds. Unlocking the paths to sustainability. It's our commitment to building the tools for systemic change. Asking ourselves. How can we utilize the power of machine learning to enhance the ways we capture energy and conserve it? We're reconstructing hospitals to enable smarter, more efficient healthcare, revolutionizing the way we use mixed reality and AI responsibly, and empowering every business owner with a way to connect, monitor, and manage their global operations at scale. It's our promise. To foster a community of partners, agents of change, architecting solutions for a better Earth. It's the foundation for the intelligent edge, powered by our intelligent cloud. So why wait? Let's build together. Welcome to the keynote, and most importantly, thank you for having Microsoft here for what is the 20th anniversary of CTEC.、Uh, it's exciting to be here, and it's especially exciting to talk about this natural advancement that we see in Society 5.0. Before I start, however, I'd like to extend our our hearts and minds to all of those that have been impacted by Typhoon 19. And it's good to see the infrastructure rebounding, and it's good to see so many of you that had safe passage here to CTAC today. So we're especially grateful to be here, given the circumstances. On the topic of weather and typhoons, my travel here、uh, was quite unusual, as a matter of fact.、Uh, it's not just the fact that flights were canceled,、uh, and we we're all worried about you know, our teams here locally in Tokyo and Greater Japan. We're worried about whether or not the event would go on, but it was also a pretty interesting trip from a digital perspective, especially as you think about this new digital age that we're in. When I actually boarded the flight, and again, I wasn't necessarily sure if the flight would leave on time. I flew out on Sunday afternoon、uh, in Seattle. When I settled into the flight, I actually joined the Wi-Fi that was available on the plane. And I noticed as soon as I joined on my mobile phone that I had an alert, and it was an alert from my home via an application called Simply Safe. And it was alerting me that my alarm at my home had just been triggered. And of course, I'm I'm in an airplane, and I'm really concerned about what actually may happen. And as I'm sitting there in my seat, I can see that one of the sensors that hangs up in the corner. Of a lower level in my home had been triggered. So, Simply Safe application gave me a set of information and diagnostics on what had actually happened. It said that maybe an object had gone through, but it wasn't sure because a sensor had not been responding for the last day and a half. And it gave me options right there to address the the issue. 
Well, it turns out that I, I left my dog in a, in a different portion of the house than I normally leave them in when we, when we go on trips. And the sensor had replied from that. But I was able to diagnose this device from a seat in my airplane at 30,000 feet as I'm rushing to get here in time to Tokyo. The other thing that was interesting is as I finish diagnosing the Simply Safe application, I get a, an email from my daughter at about the same time. I have a 17-year-old daughter. Uh, she is beautiful. I, I love her. Uh, but she usually asks for a lot of money. Uh, and this was no exception. And so here I am, again, in an airplane, connected on the Wi-Fi, and I get a request from my daughter for money. I don't know what she's going to use it for, but I do notice a trend. Most times when I leave town, the requests for money come in. Luckily, I have cameras all over the house so I can see exactly what's happening. So I transfer my daughter money through an application called Venmo. And again, in this digital age, as I'm sitting there on an airplane, I don't have to connect my financial institution. It's a Sunday afternoon, and I'm able to transfer dollars that she needs in this critical moment through an application immediately over to her. Now, of course, that's linked to the back end of my financial service, but my bank never has to get involved, and we actually never have to exchange cash. She then goes and pays for an item through the same application in Venmo. Absolutely amazing. The other thing that I was reminded of as I was on the plane, and these are successive events, is that I have a neighbor who is, who is aging and has some problems with diabetes. And it's my job every two weeks, because my neighbor is learning technology, to remind her to send her analysis her blood analysis to the doctor through this application called Mobile Doctor. Now, the interesting and fascinating thing about this is I'm communicating with my neighbor through this application and reminding her that she should send in her blood work samples. Now, years ago, this would have been a trip to the hospital. A nurse would have had to diagnose exactly what was happening. But now my neighbor is actually the nurse in this case who's diagnosing and giving information on herself to a care provider who's able then to include that and incorporate that into records. And as I'm sitting there on a plane, I'm thinking, wow, what a different experience this is than five years ago. And an even vastly different experience than we had 20 years ago across things like simple home security, transactions, things like healthcare. And that's what our time is here today. It's about not only looking back, but moving us forward in this notion of society 5.0. And in moving us forward, from a Microsoft perspective, we'll enable society 5.0 through our digital transformation. And at the core of that and at the foundation of that, is our technology, and we're going to have a great conversation talking about partners who are leveraging our technology. Ian Legro is going to come up and talk about our overall technology stack and windows. We're going to talk about digital transformation and the role that that plays in Society 5.0. We're also going to talk about this notion of human ingenuity. Digital transformation is first and foremost about the people. What we do as people to help drive us and propel us forward in this transformation and to continue the evolution of our culture. And then we're going to talk about the new experiences, the new business models and the partnerships that are created as a result of Society 5.0. Now at Microsoft, for us, it all starts with our mission. And that mission is empowering every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. This goes across every single thing that we do, across every product and service that we build. And it's how we show up to customers. It's not just the words that are on this slide. We put people at the center of everything that we do. Perhaps the most interesting part about this mission is this notion of on the planet. And this is important and interesting as we think about this in our mission. 
regardless of what part of the world that you live in, what industry you're in, what the demographic is, we want everyone on this journey of digital transformation, and our mission embodies that. Our mission is grounded in our worldview of intelligent edge and intelligent cloud. When you think about intelligent edge and intelligent cloud, we have this notion of heavy compute on the edge, driving data and information on the edge with the cloud where a lot of information is stored. And these two things, the edge and the cloud, are working through seamlessly in creating this notion of ubiquitous computing. We often talk about this in the context of mobility, your data moving with you where you are regardless of the device and creating experiences for you that enrich your overall engagement with technology. They're people-centered experience. Because it is traveling with you, because you are at the center of it, and the data and information travels with you, this notion and concept of mobility puts people at the center. And then, of course, AI. When you have the rich set of data on the edge combined with the rich set of data and information in the cloud, it helps us continue to answer questions. It helps us continue to ask questions as well as answer questions. And so ubiquitous computing, people-centered experiences, and AI really at the heart of our worldview of intelligent edge and intelligent cloud. AI is also at the center of Society 5.0, along with other technologies, IoT, which we'll talk more about, and specifically what I'm focused on and represent, big data and information, and of course, the evolution of robotics. But AI becomes key and central, key and central in understanding exactly how we take and harness this capability that data allows us and move it forward. At Microsoft, we have a set of initiatives that are focused around AI for good and looking at things like accessibility, looking at the earth and how we preserve and how we drive this next agricultural revolution, looking at the humanitarianism and this aspect of humanitarianism in AI. And it underlied, it's underlied by this theme of trust and security that are required as we embark on this next journey. So to learn a little bit more about AI and AI for good, Let's roll the video. Like never before, our world is changing. Faced with some of our most critical challenges, human ingenuity triumphs. Today, the Microsoft AI for Good initiative enables a person with an idea to accelerate it, to give it scale, to create change for the better. Microsoft AI will help our work by empowering people to take action. Through AI for Earth, photos can now help save a species. With AI for accessibility, the visual world becomes an audible experience. Sanitary and peanut butter. And with AI for humanitarian action, first responders can target their efforts faster than ever before. It feels humbling to know that I'm actually helping another human being. Today, we are empowering others to forge new paths, to fight famine before a crisis strikes, and protect ecosystems by identifying forests down to a single tree. We have the forest that we have today. We can't change that. What we can change is the future. Microsoft AI is fueling some of the most passionate and creative people on our planet with the help of citizen scientists to make change, once thought impossible, real. AI will know and understand and model based on the child interaction. AI unleashes new possibilities to impact our world. And together, we're not just dreaming it, we're doing it. So really great overview of how we think of AI and specifically AI for good. But it's not just humanitarian efforts, and it's not just AI for Earth, we're empowering companies large and small who are leveraging AI. A great example is JTB, and I know that they have a keynote later on today. The travel agency JTB, as well as travel information firm Navitime, developed an AI-powered chatbot called Miko. Now, Miko obviously has great meaning 
here in Japan. But the chatbot is this super smart bot that's fueled by AI and designed to take the guesswork out of traveling as well as dining out. It answers questions by drawing on the rich database that JTB has around travel and the resources and information from images, not only that they have, but from users. And then it also taps into Navitime's extensive knowledge base about trains, buses, and ferry service and infrastructure. And the app is even flexible enough to recognize that when you take a picture, you can ask Miko what it is and you get feedback and responses back. That's AI in real time and that's an example of how we're helping companies like JTB and Navitime. Another area that we're really focused on empowering is healthcare. There's a significant opportunity with cloud and AI to accelerate health care. And this is the notion of collecting health data, systems in the cloud, and making health work better for the people and help advance medicine, really get down to precision level diagnosis. We see huge opportunities in the way that technology can help mitigate the rising cost of health care. That example that I gave earlier about Modo and the fact that my neighbor is now a nurse practitioner, never has to leave her home, saves us money and dollars and helps those with serious illnesses actually get better diagnosis on the small things that lead up to those that are serious. We work with a company uh, called Estellas. And Estellas is interesting in that they've bought into this notion of AI, and they're leveraging data and information to help make better decisions about how they actually engage and interact with patients. Estella utilizes mixed reality as a tool to improve the doctor-patient engagement and interaction. It helps convey the seriousness of an illness, and a patient wearing the HoloLens, what it does is it enables the doctor to project images in real time, a bone perhaps, and then it allows the doctor to have what-if scenario conversations with the patient so that they can see these things in real time but overlay a digital representation so that the doctor can explain to the patient exactly what's happening and exactly what the paths are for cure or to dive further into diagnosis. It's pretty awesome actually when you think about leveraging something like HoloLens and AI because it takes a person like myself who knows nothing at all about the medical profession and it really puts us in the center of the decision that we have to make about our own care and that's really really critical as we move forward from a medical perspective. Azure from a cloud perspective helps support this end-to-end -end process through the analysis through the personalization, and also through the visual experiences. This solution as it evolves has enormous potential. You know, imagine doctors in Osaka collaborating with doctors in Tokyo around osteoporosis and a diagnosis around bone and bone marrow. It's absolutely fascinating. What you see happening with all of these solutions, all the data and information that's being gathered, is this concept of a digital feedback loop. And it creates continuous value. And stay with me for a second as I talk through the digital feedback loop. On the end of this, in the healthcare example, there are patients at the end. We can call those engaged customers. The empowerment that it gives the patient the operations that get optimized and the speed in which decisions can be made and how products are being transformed as a result. All of those inputs are data inputs that feed into this thing that we call the digital feedback loop. And over time, the more data and information that's brought into this feedback loop helps make the overall set of data and information smarter. And so you think about something like Society 5.0, where you might have the healthcare example. 
that we just talked about with Estellas. Or we might have an infrastructure example and information going on about you know, sensor level technology, getting data and information on how trains are operating or how buses move through the city that may be feeding in. You might have information on mobility. All of those in their own digital feedback loops feeding this larger set of data that helps us move forward. It creates this notion of continuous value. We showed you some great examples and I talked through JTB and Estella very briefly. But what I'd like to do now is invite Taisei on the stage to talk about their company and how they're leveraging our overall stack and supporting Society 5.0. So please help me welcome Mr. Iwata from Taisei. ご紹介いただきました大勢建設の岩田でございます本日は私どもにあのこのようなプレゼンテーションの機会をいただきましたこと大変光栄に思っておりますウルトニーさん大変ありがとうございますはじめにですねこの度の台風19号被災を受けられた皆様に心からお見舞いを申し上げます私ども大勢建設は1873年の創業以来、日本の近代化や戦後の復興、経済成長とともに歴史を刻んでまいりました。当社は、人が生き生きとする環境を創造するというグループ理念のもと、自然との調和の中で、安全安心で魅力ある空間と豊かな価値を生み出し、次世代のための夢と希望にあふれた地球環境づくりに取り組んでおります。さて、今年の CTEC では、新たにソサイエティ 5.0 タウンエリアが設定され、当社もさまざまなソリューションを提示しております。このソサイエティ 5.0 を実現するためには、業種、業界の垣根を超えた競争が必要と考えております。また、当社が持続的な成長を続けていく上で、新たなパートナーとの協業や、売上増加に寄与する新たなビジネスモデルの創出が必要と考えておりますあらゆる産業においてデータを活用してサービスがつながる社会が実現している中で建設業界も例外ではございませんデータを活用した顧客にとっての価値創造を提供できる企業がビジネスの勝ち,口勝ち組になると認識しております大成建設は建物引き渡し後の施設運用、保守事業に着目し、AI、IoT を活用し、不動産価値の維持や利用者満足度の最大化、建物保守業務の効率化を図るため、本年7月に専門組織 AI、IoT ビジネス推進部を立ち上げ、用途、機能別に複数ソリューションの検討を開始しております。私どもは、IoT、サービスで実績を積みながら建物のライフサイクル全体を収益源の対象とするストック型ビジネスの展開を目指していきます。体制建設は建物や利用者のさまざまなデータを IoT センサーなどを収集後、可視化し、AI による分析結果をもとに建物設備の自動制御などを行うクラウドサービス基盤、AI、IoT プラットフォームを構築し、このデジタルプラットフォームを共通基盤に建物や利用者のさまざまなデータをつなげより良い社会をより良い未来を築いていきたいと考えておりますそしてあらゆる建物を利用する人々がより生き生きと働ける未来をそして建物自体が今までにない価値をつけて進化していく未来を実現するために大成建設はデジタルトランスフォーメーションをこの建設業界で推進してまいります体制建設の目指す姿を実現するためにクラウド基盤としてマイクロソフト Azure と Windows 10 IoT ベースのエッジデバイスを活用し
2019年度後期からまず3つの事業を随時展開してまいります一つ目は地震発生直後の建物健全性把握でございます近年多発する大規模地震への対応策として余震による二次災害の回避やインフラや生産設備などの事業継続性計画の早期立案が社会的に求められております大成建設では地震発生直後に建物の健全性を迅速に評価し建物の所有者や管理者にタイムリーに通知するためのシステムを開発しており今後さまざまなデータを収集管理運用するためのクラウド基盤としてマイクロソフト Azure と Windows 10 IoT ベースのエッジデバイスを活用しますこれにより地震発生直後の突発的かつ短時間に長大なデータ量の処理が求められる状況での生活かつ迅速な情報伝達による BCP 初期対応への支援を行ってまいります2つ目は施設統合運営管理であります建物ライ,フライフサイクルコストの観点においては建物竣工後のランニングコストは建設時に必要なイニシャルコストよりも高くなるとされており建物オーナーには大きな負担となっております大成建設では建物運営管理費を最小化するため大成有楽不動産らのグループ会社と連携し AIIoT を活用した建物運営管理業務の効率化のためのサービスの構築と提供を検討しております今回マイクロソフト Azure と Windows 10 IoT をベースにした日本マイクロソフトの建物運営管理サービススマートビルディングソリューションを活用しその第一弾としてビル管理者向けに建物運営管理業務の効率化支援サービスの実現を目指してまいりますさらに今後大成建設と日本マイクロソフトで設計施工と建物運営管理をパッケージ化したビジネスモデルの展開を進め顧客の資産価値の維持向上を図ってまいります3つ目は生産施設従業員の作業状況を見える化であります生産労働人口の減少や従業員の高齢化が社会的な問題となる中作業の効率化や安全性向上は生産施設においても大きな課題となっております体制建設ではこれらの課題に対し施設や装置の改善に加え従業員の作業状況をモニタリングしそこから得られるさまざまなデータを活用した新しいソリューションを開発しております従業員の心拍、体温、姿勢などの身体の状況所在、作業管理のデータを環境のデータを Windows 10 IoT ベースのエッジデバイス経由で随時取得してマイクロソフト Azure 上に蓄積し関連情報をモニタリングし同時に AI による分析などを行うことで従業員の作業負担軽減や労働環境を改善するための効率的な作業計画立案作業状況を考慮した動線レイアウトなどを検討し最適な指示やアクションの指示を支援してまいります最後になりますがデジタル変化を推進するにあたり体制建設が長年にわたり培ってきた建築土木エンジニアリング都市開発に関するナレッジとマイクロソフトのクラウドやエッジなどの最先端技術および最先端セキュリティを合わせることで新しい価値創造を実現していくべく私ども体制建設はマイクロソフトとの協業を開始いたします今までは想像できなかった協業のあり方が今後の新たな市場を形成していくことそして日本社会がさらに活気に満ち溢れることを願っております本日は大変ありがとうございました Thank you again, Iwata san. Just a really, really great example of a partner that we have and that we're working with to build and accelerate solutions. Now, one of the things that was interesting as I was listening to Taisei talk about their technology is Taisei is leveraging the entire Microsoft stack. When you think about the Microsoft stack that is enabling 
digital transformation and enabling Society 5.0, we have the most comprehensive and consistent stack of any company in the industry. We're trusted by governments and startups and more than 95% of Fortune 500 companies leverage our technology. We have over 54 data centers, Azure data centers worldwide. And when we start talking about comprehensive, it starts with a set of cloud solutions that enable you to engage in IoT, build IoT solutions with minimal dev experience. Solutions like Azure IoT Central, the reference architectures that exist in PaaS. We think about dynamic field connected services. We then have a set of services that are rich around Azure IoT Hub that allow for that event processing, that ingestion engine that allows you to start analyzing data and information. Leveraging things like digital twins, as Iwatasan was talking about, Taise, this building management solution, can leverage things like digital twins where you take a physical representation of something and overlay it with a digital representation and have the ability to leverage a device like a HoloLens to start manipulating what that environment looks like. Those are the types of services in addition to things like Azure ML that are available. We build consistently from cloud to edge. And this notion of app platform and security, identity and management are themes that extend across our entire stack. We have Azure Sphere, the smallest microcontroller, secure connected microcontroller, all the way to Azure Stack. I'm now pleased to share some information around Windows IoT and some of the great announcements that we have coming up with our partners in our ecosystems. And to do that and to go into more detail, Ian Legro, please. Okay. Thank you, Rodney. Hey, thank you. Good morning. I'm very pleased to be here this morning for the 30th anniversary of CTEC. Now, I run the engineering team at Microsoft that builds the products for Windows IoT. And I think, although some of my colleagues may disagree, I think that I have the best job at Microsoft. The reason is because IoT is key to digital transformation. This morning, I'm going to talk about digital transformation technologies of the edge, how AI powers the intelligent edge, I'm going to talk about our Windows IoT products, announce some new products, and give you some demonstrations, including artificial intelligence here on stage. I'm often asked about the in di digital transformation. And an example I give is the traffic intersection. It has evolved over the last many decades from very simple systems with lights to now having sensors in the roadways, cameras, and having this connected to the cloud, which helps cities transform. And this all starts with devices at the edge, the sensors and the cameras. And now this is being powered by edge gateway devices that enable AI right on the edge. Now the architecture for building these solutions is evolving over time. Microsoft entered the embedded space with Windows Embedded about 20 years ago. Back then, you would have a computer class device that was installed inside a factory or behind some system. And that computer class device would run Windows Embedded and you'd have your applications built on top of that. Quickly, these systems are connected together. They would speak to a server and eventually the cloud and become smarter, and you'd have data flowing from the edge up to the cloud, and you'd often have controls flowing back down from the cloud to the edge. Now with the intelligent edge, there's a transformational change occurring now, where you still have your data flowing up to the cloud, but more than just controls flowing back to the edge, 
the cloud is drawing insights and can send intelligence back to the edge. And that intelligence is often in the form of AI models. And the technology that we're using to send that back is called containers. These are ways to easily share artificial intelligence models between the cloud and the edge. Now we recognize that this adds new complexity to deploying solutions on the edge. And we care about this deeply, and Microsoft's working, as Rodney said, with our entire stack of technologies to make this easier for you. We consider the time it takes to deploy solutions, because these solutions, they involve devices at the edge, software on those devices, software in the cloud, and these AI models which go in between. Our goal is to make it as easy as possible to create these systems, manage them, and maintain them. We also know it's very important to consider security and trust. In many industries, there are requirements around privacy or compliance that must be met, and we design our systems to make it easy for you to meet those requirements. And finally, with this modernization, requires new skills for employees and new technologies. The Windows for IoT family of products is focused on delivering to make this complexity easier so you can deploy these solutions and build your transformative technologies. When I'm working with my engineering team, we focus on three areas, smart, secure, and fast. With smart, we want to make it as easy as possible to bring the smarts, that's the AI models, to the edge. And we connect that with our other technologies. We have the Azure IoT product family, and one of those products is Azure IoT Edge. And so we make it easy to bring the models down using Azure IoT Edge. I mentioned secure. Secure is at the heart of what Microsoft does with our operating systems. It's something we take extremely seriously. We dedicate an enormous amount of energy towards security and allow you, with our Windows for IoT products, to have a turnkey secure solution. So we're worrying about the security, so you don't have to build the same level of expertise as you would if you didn't have our turnkey solution. And finally, fast, that's to help reduce that time to market. Our products are built as a family. We have the operating systems, we have the cloud, we also have all of the tools that you need to build your solutions. Our Visual Studio tools have been around for decades. They allow you to build these seamless solutions between the cloud and the edge. And all of this is built on the same foundation as the version of Windows you have on your computers. So there's 900 million people every day using Windows validating it, testing it, making sure it is as best as it can be so that we can continue to improve it. And this helps your IoT solutions because it's built on the exact same technology. Now, our platform is a scalable platform. We offer different versions of our Windows IoT products. We offer Windows IoT Core and Windows IoT Core services. This is a product designed and built on top of our Windows, base Windows, but it's engineered for products that, where the cost of the device is of paramount importance. Also, we have greater diversity of silicon for Windows IoT Core, and I'll have an announcement about this later in my talk. Windows IoT Enterprise is for fixed function smart devices, and it's a lockdown version of the exact same version of Windows that you have on your computers. It has full compatibility with software that may have been built um, a decade ago or farther back, and leverages all of the latest technologies as well, providing you with a completely compatible solution. And finally, we have Windows IoT Server. This is for the most demanding applications where you have server class hardware, have massive amounts of storage, and all of these products are backed by 10 years of OS support, security, and manageability. And when I say manageability, it's another one of Microsoft's products. We have System Center and Intune, which are management tools for managing devices running Windows. They currently manage 170 million devices in the world. 
And so all of your IoT devices can be easily managed. These updates can be pushed out to them, security maintained using our technologies. Now, I'd mentioned Windows Server IoT. I have, I would like to announce, a new member of our IoT family. This is SQL Server IoT 2019, the latest version of our industrial strength database. It's designed to bring you the same quality, robustness, and scale of SQL Server, but for IoT scenarios, where you may be partially connected or always disconnected, or perhaps you have special privacy or compliance requirements. This is used by many of our healthcare providers, where they have a large MRI machine or scanning machine, and they need to have special privacy and compliance rules met, so they need to keep their data local. They also have extreme latency requirements. They need to be able to get to that data quickly. And so for them, this is the ideal solution. SQL Server IoT 2019 can analyze large databases with minimal latency. It's the most secure platform, has built-in security and compliance features, and it also has industry-leading performance availability and scale. It'll be available before the end of this year. Next, I would like to announce our Windows ML container host. I mentioned earlier in my talk about how the latest Intelligent Edge, one of the powers is the ability to share models. These are AI models between the cloud and the edge. Now, to get the most out of your models when you're running them on the edge, you want to use the right hardware for running the model. And in the case of models where you're doing vision processing, analyzing photos or video, you really want to have the power of a GPU. Now, you can do that today. However, the container host today is very large. So you have to have this host on your device, and this has to be there even before you bring your model down. That's three and a half gigabytes. That's on Windows. Now, if you're using Linux, it's even larger. It's about 4.9 gigabytes. You could choose, if memory is too expensive on your device, to go with a CPU-only solution. It's about a gigabyte. But this is not optimized for vision scenarios. And so we have used our investments in Windows ML, our investments in DirectX, which is the standard for high-performance graphics on Windows, to create a specialized container designed explicitly for ML workloads it's only 3.35 gigabytes, so 350 megabytes. So 10 times smaller than containers today. This gives you more space on your devices, either an ability to reduce the cost of the devices or to have richer, more complex models on your devices to do even better AI modeling. Now, next I want to show you a demo of some of this. My, the demo I'm going to show first showcases the difference between running a model in the cloud versus running it locally. Because as I've said, a big important feature is the ability to run models locally to get the advantages of local compute, local storage, and lower latency. So in this demo, which I have here, I have three different versions of the same model. On this side, we have the model in the cloud. And what we're going to do when I run the model is the cloud, the model running in our data centers, but the images are local. They're going to be sent up across the network to the cloud and process them. In the second, the middle case, I'm going to run it locally, but on the CPU. And in the final case, I'm going to run it locally on the GPU. Let's see it go. You can see it's loading. It's going to run for seven seconds on each device. You can see that going up to the cloud was clearly slower. Because of the cloud, it has to transmit those images. So while I have unlimited computing power on the cloud, latency is key. And so if I'm doing a specialized um, video analysis, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes, it's really not practical to send that video feed maybe for one camera, but if I'm doing traffic monitoring and a single intersection may have four or five or six cameras, 
and I have hundreds of intersections, you can just imagine how much data has to flow. It's just not practical. Now, here, here at the end, it showed you what it was capturing. So it's just identifying bounding boxes for people. But on the far side, so on the GPU, it's 20 times faster. So it's able to do multiple cameras per device, do it on the cloud, and capture the information you need, showcasing that intelligent edge with the right hardware GPUs and our Windows ML container allow you to do intelligent or incredible AI processing on the edge. Now, if I could switch over to my demo machine here again. What I have here on stage, I have a industrial PC, and on top of the industrial PC is a camera, and this is running a model that was brought down from, the, from, the, from Azure, our, our, um, from the cloud. So we built the model in the cloud, and I'd like to go back to my slides for one second. So with my slides here, I have a picture of a park. Now in this park, I have cameras, and I want to add a edge device to look at the cameras and give me some, in, some insights. So for example, let's say that it's important to, for me to know at any given time how many people are coming into the park. Now the way I would design this system is I have a cloud and edge solution. In the cloud, I can take advantage of our data processing, our modeling, and so you can use the Azure machine learning, our custom vision AI or a vision suite to build a model. So I don't have to be an AI expert, I just have to know what I want. So I've picked that I want to have people detection, just to detect if a person is present or not. And then I package up that model and I use Azure IoT Edge to push it down to my device like my computer I have over here in the corner. Now if I could go back to the um, computer screen over here, just to show you, this is a real demo, I am going to select my test camera, which is the one I have up on here on stage. And then I'm gonna launch my demo, and it's bringing the model down and once it brings the model down, it'll begin feeding the video from this camera, and there I am. And this model, you can see as I move around, it's capturing me live. It even thought my shadow was a person too. Um, this is a live demo. So it's running a model. What you're seeing here is a model that was developed on the cloud and brought down to my edge device. Now, let me change cameras. I've got a video feed that I'm gonna bring in, and it's from my park. And it's downloading this new model, and you can see here, I'm running the model again against a video stream, and it's identifying people. Now, what I've noticed here is that a lot of people are riding bicycles. It would be very helpful if this model could be tuned and look for bicycles as well as people, because perhaps I want to change some configuration in the park. Or this could be um, a different type of scenario. Perhaps we are doing some uh, search and rescue, and we have to change what we're looking for. So I can go into Azure and I can make some changes and tell it to start looking instead for, just one second here. All right, I'm gonna switch back to my slides. So what was gonna happen next was, I was gonna select a new model and the new model has, will come down from, our, from the cloud and that model would detect bicycles as well as people. But unfortunately, the demo gods were not with me today. And so what this demo showed was, the first demo showed the ability for cloud computing and edge computing to work together. The same model working in the cloud and on the edge and with our, Azure, or with our Windows ML container how much faster it was a process on the edge. And my second demo showed a live AI machine running here on stage, detecting first me, and then switching to a different model that detected people in my video, and then I would have shown it detecting people on a bicycle as well as people. 
the power there is that nothing in the park would have to change. You could set it up once, and as you gain new insights, your project can become smarter, and you can deploy those new insights down from the cloud. All right, if I could, where are my slides? Thank you. Now, next up, I have another announcement to make, and I would like to invite our very dear partner. Please welcome Harashima-san, yeah. president of NXP Japan. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you coming. for inviting me. Yes. Microsoft and XP have worked together for many years. What we're announcing this morning is general availability of Windows IoT Core on the IMX family of processors. So thank you again for coming. Yeah. Now, we've worked on this project for several years. Okay. Can you tell me what's in the BSP that you're providing? Okay. So, yeah, uh, I think it is better to use uh, Japanese language because uh, these audiences are almost Japanese. Perfect. It's okay? Yes. Okay, so uh, NXP no Harashima de gozaimasu. え、今回はこのような機会いただいて本当に感謝しています。え、とですね、え、BSP に関して、え、開発状況及びサポートの状況に関して今、イアンからクエスチョンが来ました。で、え、実はですね、NXP自体はもう20年以上にわたってWindow
すぐにその日からですね開発ができるという体制になっていますしかもあのそのダウンロードに関しては当然あの無償でですねフリーでやっていただけるようなことになっていますで、えー、現在ですね、えー、とこの辺のリファレンスボード NXP 自体が当然作っていますけれども、まあ、それ以外にも先ほどお話ししましたようなあのパートナー様がいらっしゃいますので、まあ、10種類以上のリファレンスボードおよび、えー、いわゆるソリューションがですねすでにできている状態ですで、えー、グローバルで見るとですね約100社以上のパートナーがすでに、えー、トレーニングを受けて、えースタンバっている状態ですで、まあ、今後ですねさらにこのソリューションベースでのビジネスが拡大していくことを期待しています Thank you Finally、um, Please tell me about、um, your customers and why they choose、uh, Windows IoT Core、yeah. はい、えーまあ、今なんでお客さんがこう Windows IoT Core とあと NXP i.mx のコンビネーションを選ぶのかということのご質問がありましたあの大きく2つポイントがあると思います、えー、まずはですね、えー、タイムトゥーマーケット、まあ、いかに市場にこう早く製品を出せるかという出すかということですねでもう一つはあーワールドクラスのセキュリティレベルですね、えー、NXP 自体はあのセキュリティでは非常にリーディングなカンパニーでございますので、えー、その辺を期待値として挙げられると思いますで、えー、現在あのアイドットあすいません Windows 10 IoT コアに関してはあのご存知のように推論エンジンであるとかあタッチアンドボイスのインターフェースであるとか、えー、あとはあのセルラーのスタックみたいなものがですねすで,すでにもう統合されていますで、えー、その統合した IoT あ Windows ですね、えー、まず我々が作りましたですねコマーシャルレベルの BSP これは単なるサンプルではなくてもうそのまま市場に投入することも可能なレベルですであるとかあロイヤリティフリーの OS ですねでオープンソースの BSP およびセキュリティ強い強固なセキュリティあとはセキ,ュリセキュアブートとかビットロッカーとかいうですね、えー、その辺がすでに利用可能というふうになっていますで、えー、さらに強調しておきたいのがあの先ほどプレゼンテーションにもありましたけれども、えー、10年以上10年のですね10年です10年の OS セキュリティアップデートがあの提供されることですこれはあの他の OS に比べて、まあ、数年ですね、えー、非常に長いということで、えー、インダストリアルマーケットに対しても十分価値のあるものであるというふうに理解しています。でもう一つはですねすで、えー、にこうコマーシャルレベルができていることによって、えーまあ、開発の方々はあのアプリケーションの開発に非常にフォーカスできるということですね。OS のメンテナンスであるとかそういうことに関してはあの力をかけなくていいというところになります。はいはいえー、で最後にですねあの弊社の i.mx とですね、えー、Windows 10iot コアを,を使って、えー、パートナー様がソリューションを作っていますですのでそれをちょっとご紹介したいと思います。タノバトゥーイアンファイナルビデオプレゼンテーション。Thank you very much, Arashi Shan, for coming.、Um, next, we would like to showcase a video of one of our joint partners between、uh, NXP and Microsoft. Let's roll the video. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Towers are everywhere. There's over 300,000 towers in the United States. Normally, a service company would physically drive to every one of these sites. I mean, in any storm, towers move. It's knowing whether or not it's caused permanent damage to the tower. Smart Tower is a technology that allows tower owners and operators to understand what the health of their tower is, and having one place to keep track of everything is important. We made the decision with Smart Tower to put the processing at the edge. Our sensor module has an XP processor and it's using Windows 10 IoT Core. The engineering algorithms that we developed and having a development board that we could throw on IoT Core and know that it was going to work was important to us. 
Long-term support for Windows IoT is very important for us. We need to have a stable platform to continue development on. From a hardware standpoint, we had to look at how much power consumption we had, and so the NXP chip was pretty low power consumption. When we're wanting to roll out new features, there's going to be a lot of customers that will want it at a certain period of time. So Azure IoT Hub allows us the flexibility to push updates when we want and to what sensors we want them to go on. What I want for Smart Tower customers is the feeling of confidence that they've got it under control. The financial benefits to Smart Tower are labor cost savings for maintenance, also insurance because the risk is much lower when a tower is monitored, and there's potential for revenue generation as you're able to free up more room on the tower for customers. When a storm goes through, they'll be able to check all of their towers right from one location. Knowing that we have Microsoft's support in developing capability is going to give us the flexibility that we need and the confidence to keep marching forward and providing new functionality to the smart tower line. So great information from NXP and showcases the relationship and partnership that Microsoft and NXP both have together in driving Windows IoT, driving transformation, as well as continuing to support Society 5.0. So we talked about digital transformation. We gave you a lot of information on technology, the underlying foundation. I wanna take the next few minutes and get into the other two topics of the importance of humans and people and all of us and the role that we play in advancing not only digital transformation, but Society 5.0, and then get into a conversation on the new things that are created. In this era of multi-sense and multi-device, there are experiences that are drivers of the next generation to improve not only technology, but to improve human ingenuity. There are more than two billion first-line workers worldwide. These are the workers that are the first line of contact between a company and the customers that they serve. These employees compromise the majority of the global workforce and outnumber all other corporate workers by more than four to one. That's across all industries in hospitality, manufacturing, retail, as well as healthcare. Now, while there's more than two billion first-line workers, 77% of first-line workers say they don't have the technology that they need to be productive in this new world. And in many cases, they don't have the modern skills or capabilities to develop the core capabilities and competencies needed. This is not only a large business issue, but it's even more pronounced in small businesses that have to keep up every single day in this digital era. It reminds me how important it is, especially when we think about what's happening here in Japan, that we bring all of these businesses along with us, the ones that we've relied on for years, as well as the ones that will usher us into this next phase. Abia is a 100-year-old restaurant here in Japan, and they're another great example of where technology is helping transform and optimize their business for growth and leading to new customer experiences, leveraging things like Azure and Power BI. Let's hear a little bit more about Abia's story. Please roll the video.名前が秋吉忍です。100年続く老舗の食堂エビアで働いております。近くのパソコン教室にパソコンを持って、そしてその授業の間に自分のマシンラーニングの本を読みながら、あ、これはこうやってやればいいんだなと一回一生懸命打
私はまず本を買って Azure のマシンラーニングを勉強しましたそしてそのあとは実際に AI のシステムの構築であったり BI の使い方を学んで実際に手を動かして勉強しましたマシンラーニングモデルを使って私たちは来客予測というのに成功したので日頃のフードロスはかなり少なくなりましたそしてあの中間品の準備ができるので回転率もかなり早くなってお客様からのクレームは楽だに減ってます今エビラボには飲食業界の方だったりサービス業の方そしてちょっと大きな企業の方からもたくさんのお声掛けをいただいております私たちはそういった悩みを解決するためにエビラボのシステムをお渡ししておりますテクノロジーのキャリアを築いていこうと思ったことは今まで一度もありませんでしたそういった方々、飲食業界で働く方々をもっと幸せな働き方にしたいもっとハッピーにしたいというところに一番のやりがいを感じています。Abia again is a perfect example of any company has a potential to be a digital company. The hiring of software engineers is growing at a rate 11% outside of technical organizations than it is in non technical organizations, growing 11% faster. The number of software engineers is growing at three times. The rate of mechanical engineers. And so, again, if you embrace this notion of all companies are becoming digital companies, regardless of the industry that you're in or the customers that you serve, this is a big one challenge for us in the ecosystem, but it also creates an opportunity to build and develop new skills and new capabilities. Speaking of new, What Society 5.0 promises is that it's going to create new experiences. There will be new business models. We're going to have to rely on and lean on new partnerships in order to get us through. We think about this at Microsoft as a fundamental shift in mindset. And there were many days and many years that we spent in dark conference rooms with rain pelting the glass in Seattle, Washington, of us dreaming about. This worldview that I, showed, I shared with you earlier, thinking about our mission. And if you look at this picture, it's interesting. It's either a picture of a pier that stops suddenly a little beyond the water's edge, or it's a picture of a bridge that spans from one side of the lake to the other, or It creates an opportunity to develop the core competencies and capabilities to construct the bridge that gets us to the other side. Either way, this notion of new in the experiences, in the business models that we need to create, we have to think differently about the outcomes. We have to think differently about the opportunity. We have to think differently about the core skills and resources that we need. All of you sitting here in the audience today, I'm sure, are responsible for some business. If you're not directly responsible for a line of business, well, then you work for a company that has to think through new business models. At the very least, your customers and consumers, as citizens of these new business models, as you sit and think through Society 5 0, you think about digital transformation, you think about what IoT brings. You have to answer the simple questions around what outcomes are you enabling? Do you have new customers as a result of your changing business models? And what are their needs? Are there new cost structures that come into place? Something that was perhaps a, a CapEx cost may be an OpEx cost in a new model, where you think about something as a service. We talked about the organizational capability. And what's your profile of hiring a software engineer in a non tech company? Or what's your process for hiring a business leader who can extend relationships across other businesses? And then do you have new revenue streams? The ABIA example in the restaurant is a great, great one. They have 
increase profits by incorporating technology in, but now they actually have a platform that they can go and extend and sell to other restaurants who may be looking at similar pushes into technology. All of a sudden, they're a technology provider and no longer just a consumer of it. New partnerships are key and critical. If we think about the 156,000 or so participants that are due to attend CTEC over the next few days, and we think about the 127 million citizens, plus or minus, in Japan. This new digital economy that we're talking about, in the next several years, I think we go out to 2025, 2030, we'll drive 100 trillion yen of opportunity back to the local economy. That's compared in relative to today's GDP for Japan, as you see here. Now, the interesting thing about this, about Society 5.0, remember that digital feedback loop that I talked about earlier. Remember the th four or five different areas of focus for Society 5.0. Think about big data. Think about IoT. There is no one company that can do this alone. In order for us to move forward, in order for us to drive this vision forward, we need new partnerships. It requires traditional private companies to work with govern government entities and public companies. It requires a set of capability in the ecosystem that is not just your hardware provider or your hardware manufacturer, but they need to be working with your ISV, the company that's building that software. And one of the things that we've invested in as Microsoft is looking at how we aggregate all of this ecosystem together, the public, the private, the different partnerships, so that we bring value to the companies that we serve and we bring value to the citizens that we serve. Absolutely critical concept as we think about Society 5.0. And we're enabling this through a set of accelerated investments to help partners bring up their level of technical competency to help companies bring up their level of technical competencies and teaching these entities how to better partner with each other to bring a set of value that is back to the ecosystem. None of these things are linear. They're all interconnected in this complex ecosystem. And when I think about the companies that are necessary in this next phase, I think about one in particular whom I think in Japan is doing this very well. Please help me welcome Hiro Sakamoto, the VP from Panasonic on stage to talk more about Panasonic. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Panasonic. えっと、本日は弊社とですね、えっと、マイクロソフト様との関係に関しまして、少しお時間を頂戴しておりますので、お話しさせていただきたいと思いますが、えっと、5分で終わるようにですね、あの事務局の方から、えっと、言われております
、えー、とこういった業務改革ですねお客様の、えー、とこのまあプロセス改善に、えー、尽くしておると,、えー、とこういうところなんですけれどももちろんこの先もですねこのエッジデバイスを磨いていくというところに変わりはございませんが、えー、もうそれだけでありこれが足りないというふうに思っております。それはあの今日もえっと、いろいろとお話がございますが世の中が、えっと、どんどん変わってきておりますそしてお客様のお困りごともここにありますとおりさまざま多様化しておりますここの,あの右に書いておりますお,お困りごとは、えー、私自身の困りごとでもありまして、えー、振り返ってみますとですね約、まあ、私自身30年、えー、会社生活を送っておりますが一言で何をしてきたかと。いうことを考えてみますと予測に基づいて行動してそして結果をその結果によってのみ判断されると、まあ、これを繰り返した30年今でもそうなんですけどねで、えー、この予測が非常に難しくて、えー、計画とも言いますけれどもどうやって予測を立てるかという部分で、えー、いわゆる知見ですねあのまあ、弊社の創業者も、えっと、いろんな物事をやるには知識、経験、熱意と、まあ、この3要素が大事だということで私自身も知識、経験、熱意に基づいて計画し予測するんですがこれが外れるんですね、本当に予測って外れるで外れますのでいろんなロスが発生してそしていろんなトラブルシューティングそういった本来予測が当たっていれば、えー、しなくていい業務に。時間を費やしてしまうと、まあ、こんな30年だったから思ってましてで、あのー、今「ソサイティ 5.0」で日本でこのように呼んでますがドイツではインダストリー 4.0 からいろんな国では超スマート社会とこう呼んでますけどもこと B2B 事業に限って言いますとこれらが目指すところですねこの情報化社会の次の社会目指すところは一言で言うとこの予測精度を上げて。そして行動精度を上げるともうこれに尽きるんじゃないかなとこのように思っておりますもちろんその大前提でその、えっと、夢のある社会を実現するとか今まで不可能だったことを可能にさせるこういった広い意味でのお支えで 5.0 が目指すところはありますが B2B 事業に限って、まあ、泥臭く申しますと予測精度を上げるというところに尽きるような気がしておりますでそこでこの予測精度を上げるところでキーとなってくるのが、えー、3つありましてそれが IoT と AI とクラウドとエッジデバイスを使って IoT でものとものあるいはものと人をつなげましてですねそして必要なデータをクレンジングしてそれをクラウドに上げてでそこから抽出したデータを分析あるいは提案してより良い予測につなげていくとまあこういった世の中をこれから B2B では目指していくというふうに考えております。今申したことを簡単に図式化あのしてのがこれなんですけれどもあのいつも、えっと、弊社の従業員でも全く同じスライドでこの説明してるんですが、えっと、一番下の部分これがあの弊社が得意とするいわゆる尖ったハードウェアの部分で、えー、これらをつなげましてそして良質なデータを吸い上げるでそれをマイクロソフト様の Azure ここにクラウドで上げてそして両者でですねマイクロソフト様と、えー、弊社でこの真ん中の部分えー、このデータを分析して提案するという、えー、これが、まあ、あのノウハウの、えー、と塊になってこようかと思うんですけどもこの部分に関して、えー、マイクロソフト様と弊社でいろいろ今協議をさせていただいていると、まあ、例えばあのここであの、えー、一例で現場点検ソリューションとありますが、まあ、ちょっと小さな話ですけども、えーとまあ、屋上の、えー、と空調が何かおかしいという時に今までですとわざわざこう脚立を使って登って測,測ってですねどうおかしいかと。まあ、これ今あのまあ弊社のタウブックというものを使って遠隔でえ全部調べてそしてデータを上げるとそれで分析していくとまあこういったソリューションを今えっと提案させていただいてこれはもう屋内の話ですがえ屋外もしっかりで屋外でもまあタウブックですからこうやってできるというようなことを今マイクロソフト様と一緒にやらさせていただいておりますであとあのやはり弊社はまだまだこの辺りのえっとアジャイル開発の知見がございますのでえこの知見のプロフェッショナルであるマイクロソフト様のからですねご協力を得ましてハックフェストということで弊社のソフトのえっと技術勇者中心にこのデバンドオプスの部分ですねどうしてもえ開発チームと運用チームというのは
相反するものがあってお互いに喧嘩して、えー、なかなかうまくお客様にあのワンチームで突き刺されないところがありますのでこのデブとオプスの部分をおきちんとお,お互いにシンクロしてですねそしてお客様にの提案に、えー、一つで突き刺さっていくというところをマイクロサ今マイクロソフト様と一緒にやらさせていただいております。まあ、こういった形で、えっと、今後ともーハードウェアを引き続き磨くとともにマイクロソフト様からはですね従来の、えっと、Windows というオペレーティングシステムのみならず、えー、先ほど申しましたこの低空の部分ですね低空の部分でお客様にデータを分析してそれを提案していくとこの部分を一緒に協業してですねこの日本のソサエティ 5.0 共に実現して貢献していきたく思っておりますので皆様からの引き続きのご指導ご協力をよろしくお願い申します私から以上ですどうもありがとうございましたありがとうございましたはい。We all have choices to make, but in this complex world of digital feedback loops, to the extent that you can keep your resource management, your operations management, and your cost management in one cloud platform, it accelerates your time to value. Multiple platforms is the reality that we live in, but you have to be conscious of the cost that that creates for you as either a large organization. Or a small business and entity as you go to build your solutions and as you plug into the opportunities that are afforded as a result of Society 5.0. So, just to recap, we covered a lot of ground today. We talked about digital transformation and talked through the technology and the underlying capability that's needed there. We got into human ingenuity and we talked about this, this move and push of companies becoming. More digital, and how we have to help make sure that we harness all of the data and information that sits within the citizens and the people that, we've, that we work with and have been around for generations. We've got to pull that into these systems, these opportunities, and that's the underlying theme of human, human ingenuity. We also talked a little bit about the new experiences, the new partnerships, and the new business models. That are created as a result. I want to say thank you again for having Microsoft participate in the 20th year and anniversary of CTEC. It's been my pleasure. And remember, as you think about Microsoft, our mission of empowering every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more is well and alive and the foundation for us for Society 5.0. Thank you so much. もののインターネットが生まれる以前にあったのは単にものだけでした機械はより効率化が求められ大量の情報を収集し解析を行う必要性が生じシステムにはさらなる安全性が求められましたもののインターネットが生まれる以前は Windows がこれら全てを実現していたのです効率向上トラッキングセキュリティ情報収集分析あらゆる産業が前進しましたそして時代の加速に世界が追いつき Windows は今もここに Azure をシームレスに統合し IoT の市場投入を迅速化真のエンタープライズグレードの高度なセキュリティでデバイスデータアイデンティティを保護実践的な分析能力を高度なエッジデバイスを通じて提供 IoT の未来を開く Windows インテリジェントエッジの基盤を構築
以上をもちまして本公演を終了させていただきますご公演いただきまして皆様どうもありがとうございました